What's up, guys? Welcome back to Drugs and Stuff with Dave Crossland. I'm Scott McNally. All of our programming is brought to you by truenutrition.com. You can use our code advices to get some intra workout, some pre workout, some post workout, some various proteins of a thousand different types, and a bunch more. Use our code advices. Christmas cabbage, welcome back to the show. Oh, hey, Dave. Christmas here cabbage too. rules. I'm here too, yes. So Christmas, Christmas cabbage. cabbage is our guest today, and Christmas Cabbage is going to uh, give the advice. I foresee this being a problem. I, I appreciate the little flag. You put a lot into this, Dave. You even have a little clip to hold that on. You I see a pencil as a flagpole. Uh, that, that took me all of about three minutes, yes. It was very inventive. Hey, did you ever see a TV show here in the U.S. called MacGyver? No. Okay. Well, you, you, you know, it's, it's almost eerie right now. I'm getting a serious MacGyver vibe. Uh, but anyway, I foresee this going was, bad because why? that flag is right where your face ends up for 90% of the show. You, you, you're leaning to the left or whatever right now. Yeah, that's the way you usually sit, but even a little lower sometimes. So, you're not going to stay like that. You're not going to stay like that the whole show. You just, you're not. You guys. Okay. I bet you a dollar. And if, if, if I win, you have to send me a dollar. I already sent you $8. No, a a physical dollar in the post. (laughs) And if I win, I will send you a physical pound. Actually, I'd probably make out better on that. Wouldn't I? Because a pound is worth more than a dollar. Did you a know it's illegal bit, yes, to but... send money through the mail, though, Dave? Are you no, suggesting no, no, that me or any of our listeners were to do anything that were illegal? But it's not illegal to send money through the mail here. Oh, okay. It's not also not illegal how... to own steroids there. <laughs> There's a no, lot of you guys uh, are like how do you, how do you think how do you think the steroids are paid for with envelopes <laughs> full of money? <laughs> Why are we the land of the free when it sounds like you guys could do a lot more than we can? I don't know. Well, listen, let's move on. Let's get to our listener questions because we do have a bunch of them. Um, If you guys want to leave some questions for us the next YouTube, we'd appreciate it. We'll tackle those on the following episode. Uh, We have a couple in the feed here. We've got a couple from YouTube, and I got a couple that were DM'd. I got to tell you guys, if you DM me a question there's a 50-50 chance that it's not going to make it on the show. I've been trying my best, but honestly, it gets confusing. If I'm trying to gather questions from this place, that place, and the other, things fall between the cracks. That's why we always suggest uh, post them at the YouTube page. That's the Think Big Bodybuilding Media page. Uh, Post them at the group for Advices Radio and Think Big Bodybuilding Media. Let's see what this comment is here. Um... Oh, this is the DHT one. Could you maybe talk about DHT in an upcoming steroid profile section? It's become available as an injectable oil-based version. No ester, just straight DHT. Uh, But I don't see how that particular compound could be useful for any bodybuilding applications. Maybe as a hardener for a show, but otherwise the side effects seem to outweigh the benefits by a large margin. Uh, Maybe it's most for powerlifting strength-related sports. I didn't even know this is a thing, Dave. Did you? No, it's the first I've heard of it. I find that's probably the motivation behind that is probably just a UGL trying to create a unique selling point to create a product that nobody else has Yeah. without really thinking about, is there a real use for this product? And it, it's going to be very, very limited straight. D- well, no S to DHT. Yeah. It's going to be very, very limited. I mean, you've got a, a compound that's literally got a few hours of existence. Now, is Proviron so, basically the oral an oral D, like oral DHT? It is, yes. But Proviron has the benefits of binding with SHBG and binding with aromatase. So that's what I'm wondering Which, if this would do that as well. DHT wouldn't do that. No, no, I wouldn't have thought so. No. Okay, really? Huh. No. I don't think I'll, I'll double check, but I don't think DHT has a binding affinity to aromatase. Okay. DHT has quite a high binding affinity. There's there's definitely that, hmm. but I'm not so sure it's got a binding affinity to aromatase. But I will I will double check. See, Proviron binds with 
SHVG, therefore reducing SHVG, therefore elevating free test, which therefore drives SHVG back down again. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a, a double cycle. Whereas DHT, I would have thought, as a three androgen, would just affect DHT, would affect SHBG in the normal way, where it would just drive it down because of elevated levels of free. Hmm. I don't think it's going to bind with it. Um, because if it does, then it's binding up and it's binding up an anabolic. Okay. Which is sort of negative. Yeah. You get huh. what I'm saying? I do. do. Yeah. Yeah, I do understand what you're saying. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure about this. What it does make me wonder though, if it, if it were say an underground lab, because I heard you know, Tony huge. Now he, he, somebody messaged me yesterday, told me his most recent thing is, uh, he is using an injectable YK 11, you know, people like, you know, like you said just now, you know, people want to create a unique product to have a unique marketing ploy. Uh, maybe if that was the case here with a UGL lab making uh, injectable DHT, I mean, it would be possible. Um, what's the weirdest compound you've ever seen in your, you're working as an expert witness? One I had a hand in coming up with. Oh, what was it? It was called frog juice. <laughs> Where no frogs, hopefully no frogs were harmed in the making of it, Dave. Uh, it was a load of bollocks, but it, it was it's specifically aimed at powerlifting. Um, it was a form of methyl tren. Ooh, got it. Um, um, it was a um, non-estered um, suspension. Uh, and it, it, it seemed very hit and miss. Um, some people absolutely loved it. I only played with the formulation as an experiment. Uh, a lab picked it up and, and ran with it for a while. Hmm. Uh, but it, it dropped off fairly rapidly just because it wasn't that incredible of a product. But I was just curious. So I, I spoke to a guy, I said, could you possibly make this? I'm curious as to how it would work. Uh, uh, you know, I, I wanted to see if the, if the paperwork bore out in reality. Yeah. Uh, they made a short, small batch for me, which I sent out to a few mates of mine that were powerlifters and said, try this to see what you think. They came back generally with those that some said got nothing off it at all. Others said they got a lot of focus and it wasn't really aggression, but it was good, solid focus and strength. Hmm. Um, and then the lab decided to run with it. It didn't really go anywhere. Uh, and I think the problem was he, I just, I named it as a piss take. Okay. Um, I'd recently heard about some um, South American frogs that had an anabolic um, property. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So, and that had come from John Moore's University Hospital. So I just piss takingly called it frog jerks. Yeah. The lab ran with it, and I think one of the reasons why it fell on its face was because people were very suspicious of this white, milky liquid that they didn't know what it fucking was. Oh, yeah. Um, so, as a result, it never went anywhere. But it, I I enjoyed the playing around with compounds and, and seeing if what sat on paper worked out in reality. Yeah. I never got to the bottom why there was this sort of almost polarized, worked, didn't work situation. Huh. All right. What else do we have here? Still from the YouTube feed. Uh, how do you guys feel about an off season of 250 to 500 test, 150 bold, and 150 NPP, um, 230 pound guy? Seems quite mild comparatively to a lot of people's cycles, to be fair. Is there, okay, let me ask you this then. Is there going to be a minimum effective dose? That's person dependent. Okay. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Cycle progression, I would say, is very much based on experience, mass, and where you've been before. Um, and also playing into that is genetics, quality of training, and quality of diet. So if you've got somebody that's got middle-of-the-road genetics, but diet and training are spot on, they're obviously going to get progression out of much lower doses than someone whose diet and training is a bit shit. Um, that person's going to need to use more drugs to compensate for the fact that the diet and training is a bit shit. 
Yeah. Um, and if you're on your seventh cycle, you're not going to get away, or it's highly unlikely you're going to get much progression out of 500 mega test if you've run it six times before. Yeah. You're probably going to need to step it up slightly. Um, most people generally respond well at around a gram, pushing to a gram and a half. That's in the, the sort of amateur and, and recreational bodybuilding sort of ranks. Obviously, when you get to pros, it can change quite dramatically. But again, with pros, I've seen guys running ridiculously low doses. Yeah. And I've seen guys running insanely high doses. And that's very much down to genetic potential there. Sure. Um, I, I mean, I know a couple of pro competitors, like we have spoke about this in the past, that were six, 700 mega a week. Uh, uh, you know, Olympia stage level. Yeah. But these were, these were guys that would grow with the banana leaves, you know, and then other guys where they're running five, six, seven gram and they're fighting for every pound they get. Yeah. I, I Okay. So 150 EQ per week. Um, no, it's... You know, that on its own, man, I'd say is a, you know, the EQ is kind of a milder compound that, I'd say 300 is a conser very conservative dose on EQ. Yeah, but when you look at it totality, mm -hmm. it, it's not terrible. I mean, the MPP, is that 150 a week or is that 150 a shot? I'm going to guess he's saying 150 a week. Now, that to me, 150 MPP is a lot stronger than 150 EQ. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Um, but at 50 effectively 50 every other day mm -hmm. uh is it in there as a growth agent or is it in there as thoughts of trying to do some sort of joint and, and injury management i mean i feel like overall this would be a nice cycle for joint management but yeah bold, bold seems to have some mild mild impact on joint health as well yeah yeah, I mean, it is. They do say it's you know it's super effective for the like, collagen production, as the NPP mm -hmm. would be. Um, it's a wide range too, two fifty to five hundred test. You know the difference. The difference is pretty big between two fifty to five hundred in relationship to the other compounds. Like I could see a guy even having potential erectile issues running that cycle with two fifty test. Not everyone. But I could see it happening. Well, it depends on how well he manages the drugs he's using. Um, I'm wondering if he's planning on a taper, and that's why the test is 250 to 500. Mm, okay. What do you so think? That of, might be his peak. Man. What do you think about tapering at that level? I, I've never been a fan of it. I've always found it quite unnecessary unless you're really moving into super big compounds. Yeah. Yeah, which we, uh, we talked um, about that the other week. Yeah, and then again, it would be tapering on, not tapering off. Yeah. So um, you've got to balance, haven't you? If you if, say you're going to run a five gram course, I wouldn't go straight into five gram. Right. I'd, I'd go up in stages, but at the same time, you've still got to balance how long you're on and how long your exposure is for those very high doses. Yeah. Because if you end up with six weeks of tapering. That, that's adding quite a lot of time onto a cycle. If you're going to run a 10 week cycle of very high doses, you've still got, you know, pretty hefty doses for that initial six weeks as well. So it's all that you, you need to do. You need to try and balance things out a little bit. I don't think this but is I, a cycle I don't I'd see suggest. Anything about it. No, I don't see anything particularly wrong with it. Yeah. And, uh, and it depends where he is in his level of development. It depends. I mean, he, he says 230 pound, but, 230 pound of what? 10%, yeah. 15%, 25%, you know, so there's lots of factors to play in with that, um, unfortunately. So it is a little bit difficult, but it's definitely on the mild side, for, I would say. Absolutely. All right. What else do we have here? Oh, <laughs> this is in response to you telling me to you were you, you wanted to do the show at 3 a.m. my time rather than support you with likes and comments. Would it be better to support your conversation by sending Scott an alarm clock? Happy to chip in for that. I agree. Definitely. 
Lazy bastard he is. Um, what's this one here? Oh, that's not even a question, is it? We'll go to the next one. There we go. Oh, okay. So this is that. <clears throat> it looks like he sent us this information. I got to blow this up. Basically a pro hormone, it sounds like. These look like those first compounds. I think they look like DHEA uh, based pro hormones. He said, what might happen if someone took a, so it looks like he's got a couple questions. What would happen if someone took a slin sup? Bottles, uh, states, 50 grams of carbs per meal. What if he did this while using 20 grams of carb per day, keto-ish? Well, depending on what the sup is, um, I mean, a lot of slin, slin sups are GDAs at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I suppose you could get some hypo experiences. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not... It's not... I don't know. Would it be necessary? No, no, not at all. I mean, if you're in a keto stage, why the hell would you be running a slim slope? I could see you running it post-keto when you reintroduce carbs. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. To to maintain the sensitivity you've created, but it's just pointless. Um, Maybe on, like, cheat meals. To be honest, it's a bit of a waste of money, personally, I, I feel, is that, really, because... Your slim salt isn't insulin. It's um, generally GDAs or or something that's going to increase insulin sensitivity. Yeah. But you're yeah. doing that anyway by being in a keto state. So why bother? Um, I mean, this this pro hormone listed below that is exactly what we were talking about before, where they're bringing out these combination products now. Yeah. Um, that's got dim in it. Um, the arachidonic acid. I find is very much person dependent. I have run arachidonic acid and I did find myself full up when I was running arachidonic acid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't, I'm not so sure in real world application how much impact it has on actual muscle growth. You've got a DHEA in there, which is the third one. I think there's um, a couple of those are DHEAs. Yeah. Um, you're not going to get anything incredible out of it. Yeah, his question is, he's got the, so he has a second question. He said, what are your thoughts on this blend? Which, as Dave just said, it looks like it has three DHEAs, arachidonic acid, and DIM in it. Um, and he says, what could one expect, i.e. growth and sides to look for? I think on the side front, you're going to get a huge amount, really. I also don't think you're going to get a huge benefit either. No, I don't think you're going to get much in the growth point, view really, either. You might be a bit fuller and feel a bit better while you're running from a point of view of muscle fullness and that side of things, but it's definitely not going to be changing the world for you. It's like like we were saying earlier, you know, too, that this product, I'm going to guess, is probably like 60 bucks or 75 bucks, you know? You're going to get a 30-day supply out of it and the results? I think as users of not just anabolics but supplements, we have a danger of falling into, well, it's it's 70s, 80s, 90s, so it must be good. Yeah, yeah. Because it costs because it costs so much. Uh, and it's not always the case, you know, and certain markets get inflated just because they're popular. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the over-counter market, you know, these type of products probably do reign supreme when it comes to building mass, but that doesn't mean they're particularly good at it. It just means everything else is particularly shit at it. Uh, (laughs) And we do tend to look at things in the supplement range and say, well, you know, it costs this much, so it must be really good. And, And quite often that's very far from the case. Yeah. I'll move on here then. Uh, James asks us on the YouTube feed. In the UK, we know there is very little or no real pharmaceutical gear. Pharmaceutical gear. Uh, what are Dave's thoughts on people who bring apparent real pharma gear back 
uh, from the likes of Turkey or Egypt. Is that still fake or is that legit stuff? Right. I think we need to be a little bit careful in what we use terminology wise, because what you tend to find with pharma products um, is that they're not they're not fake as in they don't contain compound. Okay. They're fake as in they're not made by the company that the label says. That's not See, what you get is UGLs make UGL products. Right. And they, they are there to service the anabolic user community. And that's primarily there, what they're there for. They, you know, they don't really supply any other markets. A little bit of TRT stuff for self-admin, but generally speaking, UGL service anabolic users. Pharma or companies or people that replicate or make fake pharma products aren't there to serve the anabolic user market. Which is crazy. That's not their target market. Their target market is the pharmaceutical company, well, not companies, but wholesalers, warehouses, hospitals, stuff like that. Because the cost of setting up the equipment to make single ampules just offsets UGL budgets in general. Mm. So they make these counterfeits, they put them into the controlled industries, the, you know, the controlled pharma warehouses, the controlled pharma supply chains, and they end up in hospitals. And very often they do contain the drug they're supposed to contain. Mm. It's just not being made by Bayer. And as a result of it not being made by Bayer, it's damn sight cheaper to make because it is just UGL. It's just a UGL product, but they're selling it at Bayer prices. Yeah. So they make huge amounts of profit. Um, obviously, because before they enter into controlled drugs uh, systems, they will get siphoned off and some of it will go black market and go into the bodybuilding community. So quite often with, with the pharma stuff that you see on the marketplace, it's not that it's gotten out in it. It's just that it isn't made by the pharma company you think it is. Hmm. Uh, and Turkey and Egypt do sell legit pharma drugs from their chemists, but they also sell counterfeit pharma drugs from their chemists. Hmm. Uh, but again, are you getting ripped off? Probably not in most cases. You probably are getting genuine steroids. It's just it's not made by who you think it's made by. Hmm. And you may end up what paying more because it is a pharma brand. You'll, you'll pay a yeah you'll you'll pay a little bit more of a premium because it is a pharma brand. Yeah. Have you ever gone uh, overseas to a place where you could purchase things legally? I have, but I never have actually purchased anything. Did you go to like into the shop zone and look at anything ever? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Last time I was in Turkey was only a couple of years ago. I, I went in to just just out of curiosity to see what, what they had. Yeah, what did they have there that looked interesting? Oh, the usual tests and things like that. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, you, you, you're not really going to find Tretin. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, the, yeah, the, the usual tests and, and mainly test and test ampules and, and pretty good Ooh. supply of the orals. And then when I was in huh. Thailand, you could pick the, the thousand tub D ball tubs, the thousand tub D ball tubs. Oh, shit. Was, what was the price on something like that, if you remember? Like, what do you remember if it was expensive? <laughs> No, it was. I didn't find Turkey particularly cheap, but it wasn't a fortune. Okay. Uh, Thailand was cheap. Thailand was cheap. Turkey was a little bit more in line with what you'd sort of expect. Mm. Um, still cheaper than what they would retail over here for, but but not not like peanuts like it yeah. used to be years ago. I mean, I grew up. My steroid use grew up in an age where everything was farmer. Yeah. Uh, but obviously that that doesn't really exist anymore. But yeah, I mean, I I cut my teeth on on Bayer amps and and, and you know of, of uh, sust and stuff. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that was how I started out. I even remember when you used to get the box with a little file, so you could score and file the tops before you snapped them. No kidding. Yeah. Huh. They um they had test available. They had a few things that were available when I was in Costa Rica. And I actually went into one of the pharmacies to check it out. Um, there was a like a, a communication barrier. I couldn't communicate exactly. 
but the only test they had at that time at the pharmacy I went to was Nabito. And it was expensive. It was like, I, I want to say it was like $200 or something for the little five. Is it five amps or three amps? Five, five cc's, isn't it? It's, I think it's five mil, yeah. yeah. Um, I've, if you go to the right areas, sort of like in Turkey and those sort of places where it's popular yeah. for guys to go and buy gear, and you look like a bodybuilder, yeah. when you walk into the chemist, they'll literally get out and pass you a, like a little color photocopy brochure. A little menu? And, and put it on the, yeah, so you can flick through because they know what you're there for straight away. They're not stupid. Yeah. Yeah, so I and I talked to him about it though, and and I you know I didn't want to buy Nabito, I didn't want to buy you know five milliliter shot. Uh, they wanted to have their doctor administer the shot, that you couldn't. They, they had some rules there, where um, in order to take it home, you had to have a prescription, but you could have the doctor administer it without a prescription. It was so, it was it was something weird like that. I mean, I think even in Spain, which is obviously quite mainland Europe, um, you 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 can buy a lot of compounds with a prescription, uh, okay. and the chemists are quite strict on the prescription side of things. Huh. But there's so many private doctors uh. that you just need a friendly doctor to give you the right prescription, and, and so you can still you can get legit drugs, but you 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 just need to bribe a doctor effectively. Gotcha, gotcha. Huh. But beyond, I think at that point, it's okay for personal use and peace of mind, but beyond that, it's not commercially viable if you were looking at doing it because you wanted to bring it back and sell it on. You know, from the prescription point of view, going into Spain, obviously, Turkey's still viable. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for watching another podcast here at Think Big Bodybuilding Media. And thank you to our great sponsor, TrueNutrition.com, for making this all possible. TrueNutrition.com is owned by Dante Trudell, the creator of DC Training. He wanted to create a supplement company that offered high-quality third-party tested supplements at a fair price. High-quality protein powders, just about every type you could think of. Huge variety of flavors, plus health and performance supplements. Check them out, TrueNutrition.com. And hey, if you use our code ADVICES, you directly support our podcasting. Thanks, guys. Let's get back to the program. All right. Let's see. We got a few more here. Um, we have a few in the feed, too. Uh, hey, Scott. Thanks for answering my question about the spots on glutes area, even though they were. Let's see. He's got another one, though. <laughs> Same subject in skincare. What would you do if you had a slight outbreak of spots? For me, it's not ridiculous outbreaks; just a few on my chest. There's a few ways you can approach acne. I mean, obviously, if you if it's very severe, you can look at um, Accutane, but Accutane is an incredibly harsh compound and has a history of causing mental health issues and depression and has even been linked to a few suicides. Yeah. Um, but I know people that run it and run it with no problems whatsoever. So, but it is, it is definitely a, a sledgehammer when it comes to acne control. Probably too much for this. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're getting mild outbreaks, first look at your routine as in your hygiene routines, when you finish training, are you showering or are you traveling home in sweaty gym gear? Hmm. Things like that are going to increase, you know. Um, well, believe it or not, I don't even know if you have the product over here, but we have a shampoo over here called Head and Shoulders. We have that too, but that's really that's really good for clearing acne up. Is it really? I wonder if yours is different yeah. than ours. Yeah, you just you just you you basically blather the, the acne with Head and Shoulders and. Uh, it, um, it dries it out quite well. Obviously, vitamin A type supplementation is good, but be careful you don't take too much. There's a few approaches. Uh, Supplemento is supposed to be quite good at uh, relieving acne as well. Okay. Huh. I You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but... Because um, we have head and shoulders, but I, I've never heard of it doing anything over here. I wonder if it's mm. if it's a different makeup because I know like we Possibly. used we have Nazoral shampoo 
and that's yes. a prescription only. And I was wondering if maybe it was, and that's for dandruff, but it also works for DHT and it can help with mm -hmm. acne. So I wonder mm -hmm. if, if you guys have something over there that, that's, it just got me wondering if your if your head and shoulders <laughs> is more like our Nazoro. Yeah. I mean, hair restorative shampoos uh, that are designed as a topical DHT blocker will help if that's what's driving your acne, i.e. sebaceous gland overactivation. Yeah. Um, but if it's a hormone balance acne driven, then it's not going to be as impacting. What about um, um, Ron and Dusty just talked about this on their podcast. They talked about the aspect of diet. You know, if the, they had said not, they said the same thing as you. Like if you're, you know, not taking a shower right after the gym, you're waiting two hours. If you're the guy who's breaking out, then a shower would probably be a good idea right away. And not to wear the same. Here's a thing that I found. I would make sure I didn't wear the same shirt to the gym every day, obviously. But I would have the same hoodie. So if I wore a tank top and then put a hoodie on over it, you know, you're spreading that bacteria. What about diet, though? That was a point they brought up was making oh, sure yeah. you're getting plenty um, of water, getting rid of the, oil, you know, greasy food, stuff like that. Never even thought of that. And very, very valid point. Yeah, obviously, diet's going to I mean, yeah, you have that in teenagers anyway, in the fact that their diet will make their hormone imbalances worse when they go through puberty and make their acne worse, you know, and. And obviously, eating greasy foods is going to result in greasy skin. And sugar, too. Like, a lot of sugars are bad. Mm -hmm. Processed foods, all that. So, just eat green leaves and bamboo shoots and nothing else. Yes. Um, ooh. See, Dave, we give advice and people hear this stuff, even if you think they shouldn't do it. I heard you mention in the podcast that the magic of test happens at three grams. What sort of magic are we talking about? So you said it, Dave, and now people are going to want to do it. I know, Jan, and Jan, no, no, do not <laughs> do three grams of test. Um, it's odd. Um, I, and I, I'm, I'm very conscious of not being a promoter of high doses. But at the same time, you know, I want to be honest. And, and there is, around the two and a half, three gram, things just seem to change. Yeah. And it's hard to explain. It's, it's, it's like your first cycle, which you never really experience apart from in your first cycle. When you go in your first cycle, you're Superman. Yeah. You get by with four hours sleep. You're, you're a sex machine. <laughs> You grow, weights go up every session. It, it, it's like an amber nectar. And then you do your second cycle expecting the same. And they're usually generally very disappointed because it just never is the same again. Um, and that that 3G experience was... Sounds like I'm talking about mobile phones, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, <laughs> but that 3G experience was very similar to that sort of first cycle experience. Yeah. He added, well, I'm, I'm currently taking 150 tests, so I don't see myself taking three grams. Thank you. Thank you. 100, 150 grams of test. Fucking hell, oh, mate. milligrams. <laughs> it says grams. <laughs> uh, no, it is. There is something in there, but obviously it comes with that toxicity and everything else. You stay on too long, you're going to suffer and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, and there are a lot of people that just physically wouldn't cope with that sort of dose. Yeah. All right. Let's power through a couple more. Um, any advantages to running test, oh. running a cycle without test? What's that noise in the background, Scott? What noise? <laughs> there must be there must be a the postman or something must have walked by. He does Funny not like not... strangers. Does not like them. Thuddy just got down here, quickly oh. followed by the wife who, who picked him up and dragged him back out. Oh, <laughs> poor little guy! Uh, is it ever an advantage to run a cycle without any test? Yeah, I don't see one. Yeah, I I I, I don't either. Unless you're a girl. About that. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
barring females, um, I no, I don't, I don't see one really, unless you're talking an oral only cycle. Um, ooh, this doesn't sound good. I saw an advertisement for Nugenics GH Boost. Any thoughts on that? It sounds like a scam to me, is what that sounds like, Dave. It sounds to me like it will be something that contains ingredient that in a lab condition is shown to slightly elevate your GH level. Yeah. And in the uh, real world? In real world. <laughs> yeah. In real world, does fuck all. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. We had a few more in the feed here in our other questions. Another Another DM. Here it is. So this is one we were not so sure about. Um, 29 years old. Uh, he's done a few cycles and he has competed. Recently started a bulking cycle with intent to compete again later this year. 600 test, 500 EQ, 500 NPP, 50 Anadrol taken pre-workout. I have taken everything before except the Anadrol. I was two and a half weeks uh, in and started experiencing shortness of breath, unable to take a satisfying breath, and it was affecting my workouts. I stopped taking the Anadrol in hopes um, that that was the issue. No pain other uh, or other symptoms. Uh, it has slightly gotten better since dropping the oral. It's only been a few days, by the way. I think he said, I asked him, I think he said five days. Um, have you heard of this or dealt with it? Uh, I asked him a little bit more, Dave. So when he went in, his hematocrit was, I believe he said, 45. Your, I believe your hematocrit cutoff range is 50 or 51. Um, mine's been as high as 57, not bragging. Mm. And, and I could feel my blood was getting a little thick at that point. And it took a while to build up to that. Um, what else did he say? He also has uh, an oximeter or whatever you call it to read his, his oxygen levels. And his mm -hmm. oxygen levels were 99, which is really good. That's high. That's like, that's very good. Uh, Anadrol can elevate blood thickness quite rapidly. Um, I did have a quick look to see if I could find anything that was sort of two, three weeks basis. And the, the shortest one I found was six weeks. Okay. But in that six weeks, it was... It was quite significant. Yeah. Um, uh, so we work over here, we work on, on different ranges, but the equivalent would have been taking it from 40 to about 55. Okay. Okay, so, so that'd be enough, enough to feel enough the difference. To, enough to, to, to probably create a symptom. I suspect, um, and maybe this is worst case scenario, but I suspect with the symptoms he's described that this is heart related. That's what I'd want um, to. Um, now, is that anything to do with water retention or is it to do with the thick blood? Because both would have an impact, but it sounds to me more like a heart problem. Um, generally, shortness of breath of that nature would be down to the heart not beating correctly either it's got a very short range which would effectively be heart failure um because of the myocardium is too thick to flex correctly or or the the increase in viscosity has just been enough to push it to the point where it's now starting to struggle to pump round. but has he done his pulse would be the next question because I've I've had heart failure and my blood oxygen levels were never really dramatically affected. Okay. But my pulse was. It was my pulse that, that identified it because your heart stroke becomes short and shallow but fast because it's trying to keep up with providing what you need. I imagine um, he has because usually the oximeter reads pulse as well. <clears throat> It does, but it's just he's not mentioned it. Now, the problem yeah. I have is because my heart beat pattern, because I've um, got a very irregular heartbeat as well, but I've had that for 20, 30 years. It's not something that's come from my anabolic use. Um, heart monitors of that nature, so the little O2 oxygen finger sensor monitors, mm -hmm. don't pick my pulse up very well. Huh, because okay. it's moving too much. It goes up and down and up and down so much 
So you've got to look at the little, if it, if it has it, you've got to look at the little pulse graph that is on the bottom. Okay. Because the numbers just won't stay significant. So it ends up giving you a sort of average reading, which is out. Yeah. But if you look at the, the graph that tracks across the bottom of the meter, it will show the, 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 the beat rate much more accurately in what I'm actually doing. Um, but yeah, that, that worryingly so, that does suggest heart. Yeah. Um, and I know things over there, unfortunately, cost, but I would be presenting myself to have that looked at. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any other feedback for him other than I, I think you're right. He should definitely keep pursuing this. It's, you know, it, it doesn't sound right. And I thought the same thing. I wondered, I just wondered about heart too. But you, like you said, man, we, you have to dig in a little bit further. This is not normal. We could say that, right? No. Yeah, definitely not normal. No. Yeah. All right. A couple more. Um, let's see. Michael Scalley's, Dr. Michael Scalley's Power PCT. Is it suitable for any cycle or only heavy cycles? Is tapering down on Clomid and Novidex at the end of the cycle any benefit? I don't feel that... I feel that Scalys could be used on, on pretty much any cycle. Is it necessary? No. But there's no real major downside to running scallies even if you don't need it yeah the hcg blast though very high is not long enough to to create desensitization yeah um so you're not going to create a desensitization issue there uh, and though it may be overkill in in a lot of cases that's not going to really have a negative impact apart from possibly the dose of clomid might make you feel like shit for a few weeks mm -hmm. um there are, you know, very much so a, 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 your first cycle of 500 mg, you could probably quite easily get away with an oral only PCT off the back of that. Yeah. Um, the, the obviously the unfortunate side is do you overcompensate in your PCT with an attitude of, well, at least I know I've done everything I can. Or, or do you go a conservative route? And then if it doesn't work, be oh shit, I'm now going to have to run another PCT. Which is better? And I, I don't know is, is the honest answer to that. I don't know which is better. I went ahead and pulled it up. Here's what it actually looks like. So... I think he may have changed it again because he has tweaked it. And at one point he was talking about adding aromacin into it. Okay. So this is a, probably the original. So mm -hmm. we're looking at, so the days after, so right away... After stopping the drug, for the first 15 days, you would run HCG. Actually, 16, yeah, 15 days. 16. Maybe 16. Yeah, then the first That's 30 it says days. 16 next to it. <laughs> the first 30 days, Clomid and the Novadex for 45. Yeah, it, it, it's progressive. So it's 100 mg Novadex, and then you drop down to 50, and it's 40 mg. Uh, sorry, 100, 100 mg Clomid, and you drop down to 50. And then it's 40 mg Novadex and you draw down to 20. Now, I asked Michael about why he had this stop cycle start PCT. Yeah. And he said it was to make the PCT easy to follow so that people weren't guessing and trying to work out oh. half-lives and see, well, should I, should I wait? So user knowledge and user awareness of where we are in cycles and what things happen has got a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was his original idea behind it was if I made an all encompassing PCT, I, he had to make it very, very simple to administer. That makes sense. Um, a lot of people will say, well, you need so long because your levels are still elevated and it will shut down. And there is, there is some truth in that, but Hey, CG is in there to recover the Leydig cells. It's not in there to start production. Yeah. Hey, C gel is to reverse the atrophy of the Leydig cells that can be done whilst testosterone levels are still elevated. Absolutely. And the idea, the idea is that as your test levels decline, your PCT does that. So you you have a crossover point. Yeah. So as, as exogenous test comes out, your PCT and natural test is driven up to compensate. 
so it's as seamless as it can possibly be. Yeah. There are other protocols out there that, that would suggest or want you to bottom your tests so that you know there's no exogenous inf- inter- uh, interference and then start your reprogramming. Is Scalise bang on with his timing? I think it's probably better that for most people you wait a couple of weeks before you start. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't think I do think that you can have that crossover and it can be quite seamless. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to bottom out your levels before you you engage in trying to restart them. Okay, yeah. But other people disagree, and and it's 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 one of those areas of topics where you can. I mean, Scally's got large numbers of case studies where this has worked very successfully. Uh, but again, there are people that have run it and not recovered. Would they have recovered with a different PCT? You don't know because you can't go back and redo it. All right, a good friend, Laser. He's from uh, oh, he's from the U.S. He uh, he's also he's one of the guys who supported us from uh, through the Patreon. He says he's at the office, so he can't put the sound on now. But I look forward to listening when it comes out on YouTube. Uh, lots of people swear by TB five hundred and BPC one fifty seven for healing injuries and post surgery. Would you be able to talk about other compounds that might help for repairing muscle and tendons? For example, I've heard about possibly Osterine or Anavar being used for this. Any truth to that? Uh, are, are, are there any others? How much did he pay? Uh, he, he, so we have two options, $5 and $10. And he joined the $10. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we'll answer his question probably then. <laughs> if it was cheap and only paid five, you'd only get half an answer. <laughs> um, the effectiveness of Anavar or Osterine in injury repair, I would say is minimal in comparison to drugs like TB and BP um, and even growth hormone. Um, you, it, it's like Anavar and its potential impact on T4 to T3 conversion. Okay. So people look at Anavar and cutting because they view it as a fat burning steroid, which it, it isn't. It's not its primary function. Its primary function is not a bollock. Um, and I feel the same way about it in this scenario. If you want to, to look at injury recovery, then you want to look at drugs that their primary function is to help in injury recovery. Um, having anabolics in your system, if you're looking at a muscle repair, yeah, there's going to be an impact, they're going to be beneficial. You're going to have a higher nitrogen retention. You're going to have a better protein assimilation. Yeah. That's all going to help in, in repairing tissue. But when you compare it to something that is specifically designed and used to help repair tissue, then it's it's not going to stand next to it in any way, shape, or form. Well, DECA is used with burn victims because it upregulates. Mm-hmm. DECA and or Anavar and uh, equipoise are all said to increase collagen production by 300%. So those three would be, I think, using one of those in addition, say say you add it in, say you get, you get a, a bicep tendon repaired. I could see BPC, you know, plus the DECA. You know, Mm -hmm. my thought would be hit it from a couple different angles and then on top of it, supplement with collagen as well as UC2 type two, you know, undenatured type two collagen. I mean, burns victims, growth hormones use uh, very heavily with burns victims as well to help with skin repair. I'd throw some GH in too. Yeah, I would. I would. I would. I I would probably go more towards EQ and, and DECA for the tendon support than I would oxys. Sorry, Anavar. Yeah. Um, but uh, my primaries would be TB and, and BPC. Yeah. Yeah, I think... I just talked to um, 
uh, Andrew Barry, and he's used uh, BPC at really high doses, like two milligrams a day to start for the first week. Um, I've gone as high as a milligram per day and then backed it off after I run out of the first five milligram bottle. Um, but yeah, when, like my shoulder, I did that. I did BPC plus I did DECA. I ran a little bit of Anavar for a little while cause I had it like 25 milligrams a day. Um, and, uh, plus collagen type two collagen and growth hormone. Like I hit it from every angle I could, I'm not going to mess around. You know what I'm saying? That's called a kitchen sink approach. That's what you said when I told you that initially too. Mm. Throw everything I can think of at it and hopefully something will stick. Yes. Yeah. Why not? Man? Um, I suppose as well, a lot of it's environment, isn't it? If you've got an injury uh, and you're not wanting to be on cycle, then you're not going to be looking at using Anavar Deca or EQ. Yeah. If you've got the option to, to be on some form of anabolic because you're running a TRT or whatever it may be, then you would potentially look at those drugs a bit more freely. Um, I just... I, I laugh... Personally, I wasn't aware of the data on Anavar in the same way as Decker and, and EQ. Okay. So uh, I didn't realize it was as it as Anavar being shown to be as effective as those two drugs. Then. I don't know about like side by side, but I know it's been shown to be right. quite effective. Yeah. All right. Well, I've learned something today. I just thought, you know, where one place would be for Anavar would be think about this. What about uh, for a female that got injured? Because we're, you know, we don't want her say like say like, especially take a female that's not enhanced, maybe five milligrams of Vanivar for the first month after injury. Plus, it's in your system fast. You know what I mean? You don't. But, like, you're, but you're making her enhanced. Well, you are now, yeah. But I'm saying like right. a girl who's not already like running Deca, a girl who's not already so, running so, AQ. You know, she wants to enhance so that. You'll be that would be a place, yeah, yeah, like a girl who say is otherwise maybe she's i'm not saying like she's a nat she's a dedicated natural competitor just that she's not a steroid user if we're thinking about like where would anavar be beneficial i could see sure for her a girl who say tore a bicep and now she's got it fixed uh if she wanted to think about something she could do then that would be a good place to consider you know five milligrams of anavar possibly yeah possibly anyway i need to ask you a question yes do you do you need to apologize to somebody do I need to apologize to somebody? Fuck off, Scott. Fuck off, Scott. Who do I need to apologize to, Dave? I don't know. Um, would a type of bar ring any bells? Fuck off, Scott. I don't have any bar. So you talking about have my your transformer bar? I don't have my transformer bar. I got an email, and I got some shipping information from UPS. But as far as I can tell, that's fake news. Because I don't have a bar right now. Ah, uh, so your bar's been shipped and you've been presented with the evidence, but because you've given him shit for the last three weeks. Yeah. Are you talking about Walter? I am talking about Walter, yes. Walter was in on this, I think. And once I started raising suspicion, then I remarkably, coincidentally, got some shipping information sent to me. We'll see. Oh. Fingers are crossed. It's supposed to show up Friday. Are you excited? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll show it to you. I'll show you on. The, I'll bring it on the show. I'll do some like some squats here in the background with it. What two hundred and thirty pound squats? Oh, I'm just gonna do the bar on the. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not loading that bar up here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not bringing a squat stand in here. <laughs> Why not? Scott Stevenson travels with a squat sand. Why can't you? I could technically, I could hook it up, man. I mean, if you look at it, we'll see here. There's the gym out there. I could just. That's I, a nice cell you've got. Thank that's you. a nice cell you've got at home, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I could technically, I guess, uh, do a little tour. We'll just move, turn the camera around. I, we got the squat rack right over there. Yeah, he's a very nice cell you've got at home. Man, I never go to the gym anymore. I hooked the stereo up uh, this last week. It's so loud, Dave. It's so loud. <laughs> and the neighbors complaining yet. <laughs> They're not yet, but yeah, we'll see. 
hopefully they're at work, you know, during the day. Okay, so you now have to post me a dollar. <sighs> I'll PayPal it to you. Right. No, no, no. You have to post me a dollar. That was the deal. Don't be a welcher. Come on now. This is... You cannot, on TV, say that you can edit this out, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot now go back on this bet because you lost. Fuck off, Scott. All right, I'll send you a dollar the next time I go to the post office. Christmas cabbage for president. Dave's going to make Christmas yeah. cabbage T-shirts. Starting, ma we need magnets, T-shirts, coffee cups, the whole nine yards. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, what do you got going on today? You going to the gym? No, tomorrow morning. Um, I have to go at five a.m., which is a bit of a ball ache, but yeah, it is what it is. But it's getting me back into the routine of things. So I am going to go eat. I am going to go have a piss because I am busting for one. Uh, I'm going to see if the um, snow has melted and I can actually get out of my driveway. And then I've probably got half a dozen clients to, to check in with. And then that will be today's done on that side. And then I've got some eval stuff. Nice. Because we're, look, we're looking at putting together a package that you can buy at a discounted price, which would be valid for 12 months. A package of what? Well, basically, so the, the the general idea is you would buy, there'd be different packages you could buy. But for example, the package would be like sausages? Uh, one athlete, one mm. athlete pro test shuttle, Scott. Oh. Press the button. Press the button. Fuck off, Scott. Thank you. So there would be our top selling, our big test. There would be potentially a couple of bloodlets and a couple of lower level health market tests. Okay. Uh, and, maybe, and maybe an IV. Uh, and say that package came to 700 quid's worth of stuff. Yeah. It'd be discounted down to, say, 570. So you'd make a saving. Now, obviously, a lot of people, particularly in the financial times at the moment, are not going to be looking to drop five, 600 pounds on testing. Yeah. But we're speaking to a, a finance company that would then finance that. So you'd pay a monthly payment for 12 months. Okay, no kidding. That well, sounds like a good deal. If people wanted to reach out to Eval, where do they go? Eval. Just go type in Eval into your search engine. Uh, EvalBloodAnalysis.com is the website. All right, fair enough. And of course, go to crosslands.org.uk. You can check out Dave over there. Go to McNallyDiets at gmail.com if you want to talk to me. Of course, check out our Patreon, too. I'll put a link down below if you guys want to support the shows. And, um, of course, we appreciate all your likes, your comments. Even if you say nice things about Dave, I will. See, Dave doesn't actually read the comments. He, I filter through. They're filtered through me. Uh, so Dave only sees the comments that I share with him. But we got a lot of really good comments this past week, and we appreciate you guys. Scott does send me the nasty ones too. We don't get a lot of bad ones, but you know, at least yeah. No, I've been called unprofessional. Actually, just recently, most of the insults have been aimed at you. I know what's up with it's that. Been right? Nice. <laughs> Those fake accounts are working well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, for another episode of Drugs and Stuff with Dave Crossland, I'm Scott McNally. Check out TrueNutrition.com. Use our code Advices. Thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging with us, and we will see you next time.